Hi, welcome to this video on Azure File Sync, a new hybrid service that will be delivered by Microsoft in the near future from Microsoft Azure. My name is Aidan Finn. I am a Microsoft MVP with a dual expertise of Microsoft Azure and Cloud Data Center Management, or Hyper-V. In my day job, when I'm being Bruce Wayne, I'm technical sales lead at an Irish technology distributor where I work with Microsoft partners in the Cloud Solution Provider, or CSP channel. So I work with Microsoft partners to educate them and help them in pre-sales and post-sales uh, delivery of Microsoft Azure. And we also work with other cloud technologies like Office 365 and so on and so forth. Uh, I also have a thing on the side. So I write um, a lot of stuff on my own site on aidenfin.com. And I'm also the contributing editor on Microsoft Virtualization for Petri.com, where you'll find a lot of my articles are actually about Microsoft Azure, uh, particularly in the IaaS space, but a little bit in the PaaS space for IT pros recently. Now, I mentioned that by day I'm Bruce Wayne, but at night I'm Batman. And as that, uh, well, I've started a company um, called Cloud Mechanics, uh, where I'm delivering Microsoft Azure training in the European Union. We've delivered our first class in February in London. Um, to a full house. Um, we got great reviews. It was fantastic. Had a lot of fun doing it. The attendees uh, seemed to have fun too. And we got a lot of stuff done. We covered a lot of material. Um, we want to repeat this experience in Amsterdam on April 19th and 20th. And we'll be doing it near the Skipball Airport at the Radisson Blue, so it's very easy to get to from around Europe. Very low cost flights from all over Europe, to be honest, to get into Skipball. And there is a hotel shuttle to get you straight there, so it's very easy to get to. The cost isn't too bad either, um, compared to what you might pay to go to a Microsoft Official Curriculum course. Um, $899 per person, or it's $799 if you register more than two people and the early birds are actually finished now. So let's start talking about Azure File Sync, what it is and what it will do for you. What I like about Azure File Sync is that it is a solution for your existing investment in IT. So it deals with file servers and everyone struggles with file servers in some way, shape or form, whether it's backups, disaster recovery or capacity. And Azure File Sync deals with all three of those issues. And What's really nice about it is it's non-disruptive, unlike some other solutions, such as you know Azure Store Simple, which is a disruptive service where you have to move your data onto a storage appliance. In this case, we actually do something different. We've got a file server, and that file server, it's full or near capacity, and it's got a lot of data on there. And as typical, most of that data is actually cold. So some of it is hot, but most of it is never used. But, you know, we got to keep it for whatever reason, whether it's legal retention reasons or, you know what, we just can't figure out what's old. We just can't figure out what we can delete or how to delete or whatever. So we just want somewhere to put it. Keep on the old process of putting disks into that server. That just, you know, ex makes the problem worse. So what we want to do is move the storage to somewhere it's cheaper and also sort out the DR problem and the backup problem. Microsoft has a solution with this called Azure File Sync. So we'll deploy something in Azure called a Storage Sync Service, SSS. And we'll also deploy something called a Storage Account. So it'll be a general purpose storage account or a general purpose V1 storage account if you want to keep your transaction costs low. And then we will download an agent from the Storage Sync Service and install it onto the file server. Small agent. And then you log into the file server Register the agent, which will ask you for your Azure credentials, and it will ask you to select your storage sync service. And then we'll go back into the Azure portal and we'll configure the file server. We'll create some things called um, storage sync groups, and we'll talk about those in a few moments when we get to see it in the Azure portal. And what we're effectively going to do then is synchronize all of our storage to the cloud. So our hot storage will be in the cloud, and our cold storage will be in the cloud. Now we can do the next step, which is we can create a tiering policy. And we can do this on a per file server basis. So I can say, I want to create a tiering policy for file server one, and I want to do it for this particular set of folders that I'm synchronizing. And then I might want to create another tiering policy for another set of folders that I'm synchronizing. Because my tiering policies may actually be very different for different sets of users within the business. And also across different file servers in different offices within the business. And Azure File Sync gives us that sort of flexibility. So now, once the, steer, uh, the tiering policy applies, well, my cold data is no longer on my file server. However, the end user, when they come along and browse the file server, they will still see everything. Because metadata is left behind, and the result is, when the user browses the file share, they're going to see 
the old files, which are now living in Azure only, they're represented by metadata. So they'll see the file, it's still in the same place, as far as they're concerned. It's still got the same name, it's still got the same NTFS permissions, but it's now got a different icon, and it's got, if they look at the attributes, it's got an online or an O attribute. And that attribute's important because if you're running antivirus on your file server, you want to make sure that the antivirus understands that O attribute and knows not to download the file from Azure. So now the end user, when they're browsing their data, they can see the cold data. And if they access the cold data, well, that file is downloaded. The file server is effectively a hot cache or a proxy for the storage, which is stored in Azure. And then the data that they're using most is stored locally. Now, what about backup? Well, we don't want to be doing backup on the file server because that's just going to suck down all the cold data. So what we'll do is we'll deploy Azure Backup Recovery Services Vault. And we'll configure a backup policy and that will create snapshots in the storage account. And we can recover files from those snapshots. So now I'm centralizing my backup. So I don't have to do online backup my file server anymore. It's actually done in the cloud because all of my data is in the cloud. But here's another cool thing. Let's say I lose file server one in a disaster. I can drop in a new file server one connect it up to the storage sync service, connect it up to the storage, and it will download all the metadata. And within a few minutes, my users will be able to browse that metadata and start accessing their files as if they were using the old file server one again. Now, this is just the first part of the service. As I said, it's called Azure File Sync. And a lot of businesses have multiple locations. So maybe I've got another file server in another office. And I've got users who want to access my data that's in file server one. Well, I can register that file server, which will then sync my data. And of course, I can create another tiering policy for each of my storage sync groups, or basically the folders that I'm synchronizing. So now, a different set of hot data is synchronized to file server two. And I can dictate that policy based on the nature of the storage I have, the nature of the data I'm dealing with, the nature of the users, how much old data they need to work with. And that's great. So maybe all these users are in Europe and they're synchronizing from a storage sync service that's deployed in West Europe. What if I want to open up an office in North America? So I would like to have myself a new file server here called NAFS3. And I would like to synchronize that and have my users accessing my data from there. Well. I can do that, that's no problem. I could synchronize my file server off that storage account that's in West Europe. However, when my users access the cold data, the performance will be dreadful because there'll be a lot of latency. So, what Microsoft are giving us is the ability to synchronize between storage accounts in different Azure regions. So I can deploy a storage account in one of the US regions and synchronize my data to there. So now my hot data is in North America and my cold data is in North America. And I can create a storage sync policy or a tiering policy. So NAFS3. And now my data will synchronize down there. And I might say I only want a small amount of data on that file server. And now my end users are accessing in North America are accessing their hot data locally from their file server and the cold data from a fairly close by Azure region. And this gives us a complete file sync solution. Now what's missing at this point is block synchronization. So let's say an end user here wants to open up a file and a user over here opens up the same file at the same time and they both save. Well at the moment that's possible in Azure File Sync. Now, Microsoft have acknowledged that this is the top feature request that they're getting from people. They want a lock from this user to be synchronized to over to here, so this user cannot open the file. It's not there today. However, we expect that Microsoft will work on this after general availability. Because remember, when something is developed and released in the cloud, it's never finished. It's never a version 1, version 2, version 3, as far as we're concerned. It's always in development, always evolving based on our feedback. And as I said, this has been the top feedback item for Azure File Sync. So what does all this look like? Well, let's start off by looking at our file server. So here we are on the file server. And I've got three shares. I've got accounting with a bunch of data in it 
happens to be a bunch of slide decks from Ignite 2017, my directors folder, and a marketing folder. And these are three shares I'm sharing out to my end users and my Dublin file server. I can go to the Azure portal and I have deployed the storage sync service. And in the storage sync service, I'll register my servers. So I'll go to registered servers and I'll download the small storage sync agent. I install that in my file server and then it'll go through a registration process where it'll ask me for my Azure credentials. I'll enter those and select my storage sync service. Then I'll go to sync groups and I can create a sync group and say, hey, I would like to synchronize a particular server to the cloud and I would like to select a certain path from that server. So maybe I pick a top level folder or maybe I take a, a subfolder like I've done there and I synchronize that to the cloud. And you can see that it is being synchronized to something called an Azure file share. So what's going on there? Well, my data has been synchronized to a storage account. And the service that's being used in this general purpose storage account is Azure Files. So if we go into Files, we will see that I have three cloud endpoints. And never mind the names because they don't have to match up with the names that I use on my on-premises file servers. So if I go into Accounting 2, what I actually see is all the data from my accounting folder on my file server. And if I go into Directors, I can see all the data from my Directors share. If I go into Marketing, I can see all the data from my Marketing share. I can also right-click here and see all my properties. I can download the files, etc. But I can also view my snapshots. So we can see my backups for my individual files. So that's um, Azure File Sync. I think it's a pretty cool service. I think it's one that's very easy to deploy for people and will give people a lot of value. If you found this video to be interesting. Uh, maybe you'd like to join me for two days in Amsterdam and not have fun, but to, well, maybe have fun, um, but to learn about Microsoft Azure. So we will be doing our starting Azure infrastructure course. So if you want to learn about Azure virtual machines, networking, storage, security, disaster recovery, backup, and so on uh, with a virtual machine uh, context, then please have a look at amsterdam.cloudmechanics.com and we'd be glad to see you. Thanks very much. Bye.